Welcome back to an SUV video on automotive stories. Now, as you may see around me, it's fall, it's cold, it's cloudy, it's miserable. I don't want to drive a sports car. I want to drive a huge SUV. But there are so many choices, and today I'm going to be reviewing one of those. The Infiniti GX35. Stupid plane. The Infiniti GX35 or as today they call it the QX60. It's big, it's a seven passenger, has a 3.5 liter V6, and when you get the GX35, you get them under $20,000 five years later. But with that said, let's go in depth to this car, this great SUV, and I'll give you my opinion at the end. As I said, this is a GX35, but I also said that they now call it the QX60. I don't know what Infiniti's been doing, it's been complicated. In 2013, when this was the first model year of this GX35, of this vehicle, um, it was called the GX35. And back then you had the EX35, 37, you had the FX, and they were all letters, I guess, that were corresponding to the size of the car. And it's a great sell. It's one of the most popular Infinities to date. Uh, like I said, uh, this is a GX35. Now they call it the QX60. But before, they call it the 35. Why? For the displacement of the V6. It has under the hood a 3.5 liter V6 that produces 265 horsepower and about 248 pound-feet of torque. It's not great in performance, you know, 0 to 60 is about 9 seconds. Has a CVT transmission, which is kind of laggy, to be honest. But it still can tow up to 4,000 pounds. It's really, you know, you have enough power, you know, you give it, it's going to go. There's no problem there. Let's just recap a little bit. Infinity is the high, is the luxury brand of Nissan. And uh, Nissan, you know, is a Japanese manufacturer. You know, you probably know them for the Nissan GTR or the Nissan Rogue, as we saw in a lot of Star Wars ad ads. Uh, but you know, this is a premium pro product from uh, Nissan, and the dealer, it's a luxury brand, and it is a luxury vehicle. And for sure, it's not up to the task to a Mercedes or or a um, BMW. But I mean, for the price, you get a really great deal. I mean, if you have the same amount of equipment on the next five, you're looking at $90,000 probably. And I mean, if you said for the same deal for a Mercedes GLE, you know, it's going to go around $90,000. This, you get everything, if not more, for less. And it's still a luxury brand. It's still known as a luxury brand. For sure, it began a little rough in the 90s, but today they are well known for their luxury vehicles. It's changed a lot. In 2014, they renamed it the QX60. And in 2016, they completely redesigned the outside. And then in 2017, uh, they finally bumped up the power of the V6 and gave it around 295 horsepower. I'm going to say in Canadian dollar because that's what I know. It starts at around $48,000 and you can equip it until 60,000, not 60, sorry, 68, high $60,000. Um, and you get decent equipment. I mean, you get leather interior, all the technology in the world. I mean, this is a 2013 model. It's almost fully equipped. It's just missing. Uh, the uh, Turing, the you know Grand Tourism uh, package. It seats in the back, a panoramic sunroof, uh, wooden trim, and uh, you know ventilated seats in the front. But otherwise, this one has everything: it has DVD players, it has a radar cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, uh, radar. Yeah, so you pretty much have a lot. You have the Bose sound premium sound system, 360 camera. Uh, you got sensors in the front and the back. I mean, this car is decently equipped, especially for 2013. And a five-year-old one like this is under 20 grand. Now, this car being a luxury car, it has, as I said, a lot of features that I will demonstrate. And one of them is the key. The key is a smart key, so you can remote start it, keyless entry, keyless go. Uh, you can push start button, uh, open the trunk, lock all the doors, and it's quite good, honestly. It's a great system, hasn't failed. You just hit a little button on the door handle from passenger or driver's side in the front that is. You can also do the same thing from the back on uh, the trunk. You have a little button to do so as well. So you have panic, hold to open the trunk, lock, unlock, lock, and to start the car. Now to start the car, it's pretty simple. You take the key fob, you lock it twice, you hold the start button and it starts the car. And 
you can close it with the key as well. It's pretty fun, especially when it's cold outside like it is right now, you know, five degrees Celsius. So it's really, really a fun feature. And it unfortunately doesn't come standard with all models. If you get a basin model, you won't get it. But if you go for a premium, which is right above, you get remote starter function, which is really, really cool. Okay, so now we're inside the GX35, and I'm going to be demonstrating really briefly the um, the equipment it has. Just quick review. Inside, since this is a pretty high up uh, model, it has a Bose premium sound system. It has dual DVDs, one in each headrest of passenger and driver, and it has seven seats. Um, this car also comes standard with uh, navigation, uh, satellite radio, USB connectivity. Since this is five years old, it does not have Apple CarPlay. Uh, but speaking of the infotainment system, this must be terrible. It, it must just, it's so bad. I don't know if it's better, but this version is awful, complicated. And I mean, it's over complicated for what it is. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, you get a pretty good size screen, but the button setup is uh, kind of complicated. You have a whole lot of buttons here, a whole lot of buttons here and here, and it's just so overly complicated. And I mean, it's ridiculous. So let's go quickly to settings. So settings, you have, you know, your basic settings, navigation, audio, phone, Bluetooth, uh, you know, beeps, rear screens, echo drive, others. Um, so, you know, it's pretty basic, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's an infotainment system it, it, and you know, this is five years old, so it doesn't have the best features. Uh, you can access your cameras. As I said, this is a 360 camera right here. Like you can do split screen. We have the front view right here. So if I put it in reverse, you will see the reverse and you know, you move your steering wheel and uh, you know, you, it's pretty good. Uh, you have more views, of course. You have, you can just have the full rear view and you can have your side view here when you're parking and near a curve. It's actually a great camera system. Uh, for sure, you know, competitors have done better since, but really it's quite good. I'm just gonna make sure. Then you have FM radio, just gonna make sure it's off. You have satellite radio, you have disc and auxiliary. So, you know, if you have a movie, you can play the movie in the front. Um, what else? You can also plug in an external device. You have Bluetooth audio, of course. Uh, you have USB, but it doesn't detect it right now. And you know, it's pretty, pretty simple. So, you know, yeah. Then you have voice command, you have your navigation, uh, you have destination, climate control, pretty simple, hit climate. It says it's off right now, but dual zone, of course. And you have here, great features. You have the heated seats, which is on because it is freezing outside. You have your drive mode. Right now we're in sport. You can have normal eco and snow. Snow, it, you know, it just helps the car. It, it really smarts it up when you're stuck in snow and heavy snow. I'll leave it in sport. Yeah, passenger um, heated seat, of course. And if you had the a touring version you would have uh, uh, you would also have kind of air conditioned seats now you have buttons here you have for your dome lights uh, pretty simple um, you know pretty standard you have your your glasses holder you have the sunroof which is uh, you know pretty good you know you would have a panoramic sunroof as I said if you got the touring version but this is just one great under so it does not have this option but you know that's okay Lastly, we're going to talk about the gauge cluster. Now the gauge cluster, you know, it's pretty standard. You have your RPMs, your speed, your gas, your mileage and everything. And you have a little screen in the middle, which shows you your range, the temperature outside and everything. You have your gas mileage, your tire pressure, your fuel consumption and more details. It shows you your warnings. If you did have any, you have your, and now you have your settings. So basically here you can control the main vehicle settings. So you go in vehicle settings, then you can do welcome lights. You know, when you approach the vehicle at night, the lights will turn on, uh, light sensitivity, you get light of delay, wiper with speed, I key door lock, so you can door lock the key with the smart key. Uh, detect selective unlock, auto door unlock. Basically, you got all the main settings of the car, and you know, it's just a little tiny screen. This was probably very re revolutionary, in 2013 it's a full color display but today we see we are used to a whole screen in the middle 
Anyways, let's carry on. Stepping in the rear seat of the GX35, it's, you know, what you expect. You have good leg room and so on and so forth. It's quite comfortable back here and it's quite entertaining. So you have the screen on the passenger side, the screen on the driver side. All right, so this is on right now, so I can turn on the fan. I can put auto if I want. Uh, I can put up and down the temperature. It's pretty basic. Then down here, you have a power outlet. In newer models, you uh, uh, standard house outlet, you have a 12 volt. You got uh, for the, inf the the TVs in the back, the volume and AV port. As I said, this car is five years old. So HDMI is not yet present. As I said, this is a seven passenger car. So what do you do to open, well, to release them? Well, you pull this little lever right here and bang. And then you pull the other lever on the other side, you lift this, and there you go. You have seven places. Two in the front, three in the middle, two in the back. And to, like, to let everything go is the same principle. You pull these two, you hit this little latch right here. One, and then two. And there you go. You have plenty of room for more stuff. In our case, a dog. All right, it's now time for me to go take this car for a ride, see how it drives. Probably drives like a huge 4,500 pound SUV, but hey, let's go take this car for a ride. All right, so we are currently driving the 2013 GX35. And uh, you know, let me tell you, it's uh, you're high up. Uh, you feel really high up. I'm used to a low car. Uh, so, you know, this is, uh, oh my God. It's not as high as the Suburban I reviewed, but it is quite, quite high. Uh, anyways, you know, it, uh, so far so good. I've been, I'm going slowly. I'm gonna give a little gas here. Uh, let's see how this goes. Whoops. So that took a while there to get up to speed. But you know, the power's there. It responds okay. I'm in sport mode too. Uh, let me tell you, if you don't put it in sport mode, dead, 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 nothing, zero. Uh, you put in manual mode. Uh, let's just say you're at dead stop at third speed. You're at like 40 kilometers an hour. Or forget it. You're never, ever going to pick up some speed. It's just not going to do it. But you know. And you know, I don't know why, but this V6 sounds really good. I don't know. V6 generally don't 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 sound all that good. But you know, it, it sounds okay. As you may see, there is a lot of body road. I'm on a back road. I prefer to do these tests in a back road because you really know what this car is made of, you know? Sorry about that. But you know, I'm really curious though, because as I said, there's a bump of 30 horsepower in the 2017 model. And I would really, really want to know how different it feels. Because I, 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 to be honest, I like the response. It's not as aggressive as any other car. I mean, if you get into a Ferrari, you're going to be like, what is this? A, 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 it's, it's slow. But, you know, this is still 265 horsepower. It's the standard that we find in the V6. And now this gets 14 liters per 100. This is what this car has been getting. Uh, I've seen better. I'm sure if you put it in eco mode. Now, let's talk about eco mode. Eco mode, what it does. It doesn't, you know, give you less throttle response. There's just going to be a little resistance. There's going to be a tiny little resistance on the throttle pedal. So you put the throttle pedal, it's going to push back on you and it's going to warn you, hey, you're in eco mode, what are you doing? So that's that's eco mode basically. It just prevents you, so it's good in the city. The city you don't need to put a lot of pressure unless you want to pass someone at the light. But you know, besides that, if you want to drive in the back road, this is not the best car to drive in the back road. But if you want to drive the car in the back road, put it in sport mode, it's way fun. But as I said, as you see, there's a lot of body roll. It's quite, quite funny, actually. But you know, it's, it's. I don't know. It's, I, I'm smiling right now, but just because of the thought of me doing this with a car like this, um, this is not what it's made for at all. So that's why I'm laughing. Um, okay, this is a dangerous. This is a dangerous curve. Oh boy. Okay. And there we go. But you know. I like it, you know, it's fine. But this car is really made for a family. I mean, seven passengers can fit very comfortably back here. You have entertainment for the kids. Uh, I mean, you have this nice Bose sound system, this nice leather interior. Sure, there's 
plastic at some places, but which, what kind of car it does it these days? And I mean, um, the refresh is nice on this one, looks kind of different, but you know, I mean, if you're looking, you need 2013, 2014 model, you'll get it around 20,000, and you get a lot of car for $20,000. And you know, repair costs on this car, since it's a higher brand, they charge you more, I don't know if they should, but they do. I, know, I guess that's how the economy is now. I like this car a lot. But that's it, that's my driving experience. It's really nice, it's really comfortable, it's quiet. Uh, you know, you got good throttle response. But you know, besides that, it's, it's fine, really, it, it's fine. So there you have it, the Infiniti GX35. It's a really good car, I mean, see, this car is five years old has 95,000 kilometers on it so I'm not expecting it to perform greatly but it's very reliable until now we have had no problems at all um, this is a first year model of course so you can ex expect a few problems but so far nothing drastic you know free recalls but everything is done service done drives well you know it's a heavy SUV it's you know it's uh, vague but you know it's not made for sport it's made for utility and transporting a family and everybody's gonna be happy in this thing especially if you're a young family and you want you don't want a minivan you want an SUV and you know Infiniti is still reliable and for, I mean, this car is $20,000 and below, especially with the mileage it has. But you won't have problems. You buy it for $20,000, you might be able to do at least another 30,000 kilometers on it before it, it starts having real problems. But with that said, I love this car. It's a great car, has tons of features, which is incredible. It's comfortable and it's safe. And it's just an all around good car. The looks are aggressive, it doesn't look like any other SUV, and that is sometimes a good thing. You look at the X5, the Cayenne, they all look the same. This one does not look the same at all, because it's still pretty high up, and you still get the SUV feeling. But with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Like the video, of course, helps a lot, and I will see you in the next video.